Okay. So with the warm-up, um, for the first question, it said, what is the molar mass of aluminum sulfate? So what was the first thing that you had to do before you dealt with any numbers? Write it. You had to write it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, you had to figure out what the chemical formula was for aluminum sulfate. So you started with aluminum. And aluminum has a what charge? A plus three. And then sulfate, it ends in eight, not eyed, which tells you that it's a polyatomic. So on the inside of your periodic table, you got to look for it. That one was an SO4, and it had a minus two charge. Right? So then we, so then we take that two across, that three across. You end up with Al2. SO43. And by the sounds of how silent it sounds, I'm thinking you didn't have the right compound. So that's cool. So on today's on today's work that we're gonna do at the end of the period, um, what I would do is it has a bunch of these compounds written out like that. Make sure you come to me and um, and I can actually have them listed out front on my table right here, but you should check your compounds to make sure you're not screwing up the subscripts before you go start doing calculations. Otherwise, all your answers will be wrong because you didn't know that you had two aluminums and three of those guys, right? But, um, so just make sure you're really taking care of that and you know, you got you can't make that mistake. Not anymore, okay? All right, so from that, now we have actually the amount of elements that we have to count up. So now you can calculate your molar mass. Okay, so molar mass means we're going to refer to our periodic table, and we would find aluminum. There's two aluminums, so we would do the 26.982 times 2, and I would add that to um, – oh, yeah. 32.066 times 3, and then I would add that to 15.999. How many oxygens were there? 12. Okay, so now when you type all that in, might change your answer from what you had just a second ago, but you should be getting 342.150. Where are the units on this? If it's a molar mass. Grams per mole, yeah, good. All right, so then number two for the warm up was the mass in grams of 0.625 moles of carbon. So this one was just straightforward conversion. Um, you're going from mole town to gram land, right? Oops, sorry, I meant to underline that to grams. So we're going to start with the number that they give us, 0 0.625 moles. This is just an element. We didn't have to worry about a compound on this one, okay? Make your little railroad tracks. We bring words down to the right. We know it's one mole all the time when we're converting. Okay, so one mole of carbon. We can look at the periodic table. You get 12.011 grams. So you multiply that one across. How many sig figs should we be having in our answer? A three sig fig answer. So we're going to have 7.51 grams of carbon. Okay? That's your molar mass. Yep. The 12.011 is the molar mass. This is the answer. All right, so go ahead and get your notes your notes page out from yesterday. We're going to look at percent composition. Now we're going to look at percent hydrate. It's going to be very, very similar. Not too bad. Um, and you'll have a little bit of time to practice it. <clears throat> so go ahead and get turn to that page. Okay, so before we start dealing with all the math, Okay, um, hydrate is not a new word. We've already kind of, I've kind of already exposed you to hydrates when we were looking at molar masses. 
right? So it was the one that has the, the dot in the middle of it, and then it has like a coefficient looking thing attached to waters. Or, yeah. And so that's your, that's your hydrate. And what it means is that you have um, water bound to the crystals, okay? So it's actually part of the formula. So this is a 10 to 1 ratio for every one formula unit of sodium carbonate, there are 10 waters attached to it, all right? And these, um, these things are very shiny. You can kind of tell that they're, they got the water molecules attached to it. Um, so let's talk about that for a second before we go into the math. I want you to add two words to the top. I want you to add hydrated crystal. <laughs> so um, so I want you to write hydrated crystal, and I want you to underneath it write um, anhydrous crystal. Okay, and these two words are going to be very important to you on our lab for this chapter um, because we're dealing with hydrates. So just looking at those two words, what, is, what do you think the difference is? Or what do you, one is hydrated, which means what? It means there's water, right? So if we were to say, um, if we were to define this as this one is wet and this one is? Dry, exactly, okay? So kind of the analogy I've been using all day today, actually, no, before we do this, if I were to subtract those two values, zero. it would not be zero, <laughs> okay? So if I subtract those two values, any ideas what, what it would equal? All right, so let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about towels, right? So if you pull a towel out of the washer, it's very wet so it's a hydrated towel and you put it into the dryer and now it's a dry towel right what was the difference between those two the water, the water exactly all right and say water driven off and please do not confuse that with it drove off in a car it's that's not what that means it's driven off like with heat okay You'd be surprised. <laughs> okay. All right. So so just know that this ultimately is going to be one of the calculations that you're going to do for your lab. It's also going to be on the back of that homework page that you did last night. Okay. You'll see those two words, and this is what it means. So the difference between those two is that, that amount of water. And so in our lab, that what you guys are going to see in a couple days is you'll have a hydrated crystal, which is a very pretty and shiny crystal. You put it over the Bunsen burner, and you drive off that water. You evaporate it off, and you're left with anhydrous, which looks like a powder. It's very, there's no shininess to it, right? And so you're going to be using that difference between those two masses to figure out how much water left and make that assumption that that is what makes it that certain hydrate. And you will be able to figure out what its actual chemical formula is just with those two pieces of data. It's kind of cool. So, um, so that's really what we're getting to. Today, we're just going to put our focus on percents, all right, so, which is going to be very similar to what we were doing yesterday. The formula is not changing much, okay? Um, but it, it kind of goes with the idea that if you have percent by masses, you can figure out a lot about the identity of all of these different chemical forms. Okay, <clears throat> so um, so let's look at how to calculate your uh, percent hydrate. Step one says to find the mass of the water. To do this, multiply the number of moles of water in the equation by the water's molar mass. So what that means by number of moles of water is the coefficient thing, okay? And I do want you to write the word thing because I don't want you to think of it like a coefficient that you guys are gonna have to balance in an equation. You don't really mess with those. Once they're established, they're established, okay? You'll see in your lab, there's a way to treat it like it's a coefficient, but it's this one you really don't touch in a balanced equation, okay? Unless you're solving for it. So. That's what we mean by number of moles of water. So it's given to you in the formula itself. OK? 
okay? And we're going to multiply that by the water's molar mass. I am giving you guys permission starting today to memorize this number. If you would like to use 18.02 instead of 18.015, you may do that, okay? So today's calculations, I'm going to use the 18.02 since it's in your notes, all right? A few of these molar masses, it's worth memorizing. Water shows up everywhere, so that one's worth memorizing. All right. So that's step one. We have to figure out how much water we have. That's the part, okay? Number two says divide that mass of water from step one by the total mass of the compound, okay? So that's the whole. So, and you have to include the water in that, okay? Remember, that compound is attached to those water molecules. And then multiply by 100, of course, to make sure we turn it back into a percent. Um, and that'll be your percent hydrate, okay? So, we're just going to start looking at example one that's given to you, and follow along, add little notes every once in a while. What is the mass percentage of water, the percent hydrate, that's the way the question would be worded, okay, in sodium carbonate decahydrate. So, there's the part that tells us 10, right? You're going to have to know your prefixes. I will not list these on the board for this next test. You have to know the prefixes by this point. I was nice the first time around. Now you got to know them, okay? No excuses. Just learn them. Do flashcards. All right? So there's our sodium carbonate decahydrate telling us 10 moles, and that's shown in that little compound right there, which has a molar mass of this. So this is your total. Typically, that number you will have to figure out yourself, okay? For this example, they went ahead and solved for it. But remember that it comes from you adding together the sodium plus the carbon plus the three oxygens, sorry, the two sodiums, all that stuff, right? So you had to, you would have to add those together plus those 10 waters to figure out this number right here. Okay? And you'll see that in one of our examples that we're about to do. All right. Um, <clears throat> so following along, step one, find the mass of the water. So what we see happening is we have those 10 moles. Remember, this 10 moles is coming from our equation that we have, our chemical formula that we have. Okay? We put it into those little railroad tracks. I'm going to cross out this bottom box so that I just don't pay attention to it. Okay, and then bring words down to the right. We're talking about water. One mole of water is equal to that 18.02 grams, the molar mass. When I multiply 10 times that, you get your 180.2 grams of water. So that's step one. Now to find that percent of the hydrate, we're going to put water or the part over whole, just like yesterday. Okay, we're going to put the water over that total molar mass right there. <clears throat> we will multiply it by 100 to figure out that we got 62.98% water. Okay, all good? Okay, cool. Um, and then just like kind of in our last three questions that were on the homework yesterday, if you tried them, the four, four questions? Three or four, I don't know. You could turn around and figure out that deca hydrate part by taking 62.98% of that total mass. So then you can figure out that coefficient. Okay, so just know that there's that relationship. All right, so that's example one. Easy? Not too bad, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so example two. Let's actually run through this whole process now with a blank page. So we have ZnSO4.7H2O. So what do you think I want you guys to do with that? Besides solve for stuff, don't even touch numbers yet. No, I want you to name it. <laughs> All right, so what? So let's handle this part. Zinc sulfate, good job. All right, so we got some zinc sulfate. Nope, don't put water. <laughs> Not seven water. What? Hep hepta. 
<laughs> have to hydrate. You guys were you guys were right over here. I was just yeah, hydrate. Okay, and that tells you that it's the dot with the water. I loved it. <laughs> have to dihydrogen monoxide. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so zinc sulfate have to hydrate. What? Okay. All right. Um, so now we're going to go to those other steps. We're going to solve for the percent. So step one said we needed to have the amount of water mass, right? So how many moles of water are given in this little formula? How many moles of water are given in that formula? Seven. Don't overthink it, you guys. Yeah, seven moles of water. Okay, words came down to the right. I know that any conversion, I'm dealing with only one mole. We're going from mole town to gram land, so if you're following the your little map, that's what you're looking at. Otherwise, it's molar mass, right? So we're gonna multiply it by the molar mass of water, 18.02. So you're going to multiply across seven times that 18.02 push equals divide by one push equals you end up with 126.14 I don't want you guys to worry about sig figs right now not that you were <laughs> I'm pretty sure some of y'all were just ignoring it but um for this one it's kind of this is a tough one to decide on because seven moles, this isn't actually a measured number, so I wouldn't base it off of that. You wouldn't round this up to 130. No. To 100. Down to 100. That would be weird. So don't worry about sig figs. Just go to the same decimal places as your molar mass for this question. Okay? That's what I went off of. All right. So we have our mass of water. Now we're going to do our percentage part. Right? So what other piece of information do I need? What? The mass of the whole thing. Exactly. Because we're going to do 126.14 divided by the total. So I'm going to kind of put the total. I'm going to just do all the work underneath right here so that I don't have to take up more room. If you don't want to do it in pieces, that's fine. So I would take the zinc. So 65.38, there's only one of them. I'm going to add it to sulfur, 32.066. Add it to four waters, not four waters, <laughs> four oxygens. So I'd have four times 15.999 plus... Should we have to, are we going to resolve for water? Seven waters? I wouldn't. I would just add that 126.14 that you already worked hard to solve for, right? So we have that. So that's me coming up with the total molar mass at the bottom, right? Take all of that, multiply it by 100. We would end up with 43.86. I know, sorry. <laughs> Percent. Okay? All right. Um, so, I would make sure you can get that in your calculator. So, you should just try it. Put it in your calculator. Make sure you get 43.86. And then go to example three. I want the name of it. And I want you to solve for it. Okay? And I will gradually just show the answer. And then as soon as we're done with that, we're going to go to the back side of that, of your homework page from last night. Okay, so remember for this one, um, you already have, you should have already had the 126.14 was equal to 7 waters, right? You didn't have to recalculate that. If you did, it's okay, it's okay. But you should have had that. Um, and then the bottom, or the second step, you should have had, so I'm not going to show all the work, but if you need my help I will come over and look at your work but you should have had the seven waters on top my screen is spazzing and you should have had 246.51 as your total mass underneath 
multiply that by 100 to get 51.17% as your final answer. Okay, so I'm going to leave that up there so you guys can ask me some questions. Good. Magnesium sulfate. Ooh, that's a long name. Okay, magnesium sulfate, heptahydrate. Good. All right, so what I'd like you to do for at least a little bit, um, not till the end of the period, but um, start looking at the page that you had for homework last night. Flip it over to the hydrate side. Up here. So flip it over to this side, composition of hydrates. All right. You should be able to handle one and two. Those are directly from the notes. The same exact thing. Okay. Three and four, notice what they're asking. So look through three and four with me real quick. You have a hyd anhydrous and you have a hydrate. What are we going to do with those two values? Subtract. Subtract them to figure out the water. And remember, we're doing water over hydrate times 100 is still a percent. So this is a different way to solve for that percentage, but I want you to be ready to do it for the lab purposes. So that's what you do for three and four. Look at number five. Number five, how many water molecules are attached? One, yep. Okay, so this would be sodium carbonate monohydrate, basically, okay. Um, is heated to a constant mass, how much anhydrous salt remains? So you have to figure out your percent water and then use it, the pers you want to do the percent water times that three grams to figure out how much is left over, okay? Or you kind of take it away from the three grams to figure out what's left over. So this one you have to do a little bit of thinking, um, but for sure one, two, a three, and four, you should be able to do. I'm gonna let you guys work on that right now, and then I'm gonna hand you the actual page that I would like you to attempt tonight, okay? So right now, use your notes, make sure you don't have any questions over this stuff so that tomorrow when we do empirical formula, then five and six should be a lot easier, okay? All right. So this is, the, this is the worksheet that I just handed you. That's both sides of it right there. Um, so what I'm requiring by tomorrow is that you knock out half of it, all right? Meaning there's, there's 16 questions total. I don't care what side you pick from. You can go flipping back and forth, whatever you want. You just need to have eight things done by tomorrow so that you're not forgetting these conversions. These ones are all uh, mixed up. You do have to have your chemical formulas correct, so I would tr practice writing them, and then if you don't refer to me or come ask me for help, you can uh, definitely go online and Google what that chemical formula is, because remember, you don't want that to be the part that you mess up. Okay, so by tomorrow, I just need to see eight of them done. I don't care what side you pick from, you can pick from both, whatever, all right? Um, but keep practicing. As long as you show me all of the work, um, remember, you can come back into class and type them all in. All right? Just show me the work. All right.